Hi and welcome to another video. No one will watch because Google doesn't show my videos to anyone. But if you would like to see why datatier.net is better than Entity Framework, I'm going to show you in the next hour. We're going to build an app called Idea Bank and a SQL Server database to go with it. Which right now I'm going to tell you my only idea joke, which is a man from North Carolina gets pulled over by the police and the Officer says, do you have any ID? And the man from North Carolina says, do I have any ID about what? There. Okay, that was my only uh, idea joke. But we're going to go ahead and get started. In this video, we're going to install datatier.net, an entity framework alternative that uses all store procedures. And then we are going to ins create, also install the datatier.net.database which is, then you're going to create your first datatier.net project called IdeaBank, but first we're going to create another SQL Server database named IdeaBank with one table called Idea, and you're going to need Visual Studio 2022 and SQL Server uh, Express or SQL Server. doesn't really matter what version, the newer the better. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I am going to do all this in one hour, which lasts time I tried this I failed miserably so maybe oops let me move that maybe today this will not be a failure day we'll see all right by the way before we start I have to show somebody because I don't have anybody I'm not on Twitter anymore oops let me go to uh, this is the app I use for keeping track of my running and I'm sorry to interrupt this app already this uh, video already in progress but this is only sorry wrong button this is only the uh, 29th of April and I've already ran 598 miles this year so that's I've been running 12 miles every other day or sometimes every two or two times in a row so I'm like super runner man but I'm slow as can be now because I got an old, but it's, that's how I can run so far. But anyway, that's not what we're here for, so we've already wasted a whole minute. But that's, I just had to show somebody because I don't have, my dog doesn't get impressed by that. All right, so what we're going to do is go to GitHub Data Juggler. Over 60 projects, one near you. I think it's over 70 now for the public part. All right, this is datatier.net. We got a bunch of mumbo jumbo here if you like to read, but if you don't, we're going to go up here to the releases to make this video go a little faster. And if you scroll down here to the MSI, that's what we're going to install. Get my little timer out of the way. I'm going to save this to my temp folder. I've already got it here. Pretend you don't see that. Sorry if that's loud. I'll turn that down now. Apologies. All right, so now we're going to open this file. We're going to run datatier.net. All right, now we're going to launch datatier.net. I'm going to close GitHub. We don't need it unless you want to come here and leave a star on any of my projects. Much appreciated. It's almost like making a sale, except for you don't get to pay your rent like I am now. All right, so first thing it says here is create a new database in SQL Server Management Studio named datatier.net.database so we're gonna do that now so my dog is snoring in the background apologies but can't wake him up just wouldn't be right alright so we're going to now have datatier.net.database I'm gonna hit OK OK now we're going to come over here and check this box and it says click here so we're going to click here we're going to hit execute so now comes um, you can skip step two I left this stuff here if you want to install uh, uninstall any of the uh, .NET 5, 6, or 7 projects and we're going to go straight to build connection string and set the environment variable so let's do that now so I'm going to type in my server name The database name is already filled out for you. I'm going to use Windows Authentication and leave this here because this is going to be a .NET 7 project and we need that. 
and we're going to test our database. And now we're going to install the connection string. And now we're going to, in about five seconds, it'll restart here automatically. Okay, so now we need to relaunch it. Here's the two shortcuts that were installed. Here's connection string builder, but we're going to be using datatier.net. You should see this at this point. So now you're ready to create your own datatier.net projects. Not too hard so far, right? Okay, still here, great. All right, so now we're gonna go back to SQL Server Express, or whatever version you're using, <coughs> excuse me, you are using. New database, Idea Bank. Okay, now we're gonna create a new table. First column, ID, int, it does not allow nulls, right click, set primary key, somewhere there, and then we're going to go down here and find identity specification, which I wish this was the default for every table, but that's another story. All right, and now we're just going to have, um, we'll let you give your ideas um, a title. It's not going to be like a book, so that's 50 characters is fine. Can't be no, because you got to have something. And you can put in a description. And this you can write a little bit. I don't want it to be a book, but we'll go with uh, 2000 in case you think you need to start writing your first uh, novel or something. All right, so now that's, um, and we'll put an automatic, we'll put a um, timestamp which is just going to be a date time just so you can kind of record when you got this great idea all right and then maybe we'll put a uh, a note and just in case you want to come back and put a little update or something you don't have to but that's just we'll do that later but okay that's enough for now and we'll call this uh, idea we'll make it singular because that's going to be the object name all right, so now we've got our table. We are ready to build your first project in datatear.net. So we're going to first go to Visual Studio. We can minimize this for just a second. We're going to go to Visual Studio 2022. We're going to create a WinForms project to make it go fast. And I'm going to name this project Idea Bank. I'm going to put this in GitHub Idea Bank, all that's fine. .NET 7. Okay, we now have our project created. We're gonna come back here and build out our project in a second. But all I wanted here was a new folder called data. And I'm gonna right click and say copy full path because we need that in just a second. We're going to create our first datatear.net project. So bring up datatear.net or launch it if you don't have it open. Click on new project. Project name. Idea bank. Project folder. Pasting in the folder I just showed you. And now we are going to click create datatear in project folder. Okay, your datatear has now been created. And I'll show you that in just a second. That uses .NET new and installs a NuGet package. And we'll show you that in just a minute. Type in my server name. Windows authentication. Click on this little ellipsis and it'll update the list of your databases. And we're going to click on Idea Bank. All right, all that's good. And save. And hit save again. And now we're ready to build, but just in case you had a large project, I'll show you this. If you had any tables or fields you want to exclude from the build, you can uncheck them here and they will be not included in your build. But we're going to go ahead and use everything, all one table and five fields. And let's get started. And we're going to click build all. So far it's not too tough, right? Now this is going to ask you to browse for your Visual Studio solution and that's going to be the project we just created using .NET new and it actually opened to this folder be somehow magically 
Don't really know how that happened, but it did. That's good. So we've got GitHub, Idea Bank, Idea Bank Data, which is that folder. And here is the dataterra.net 7 class library. That's what we want. That's that's a multi-project solution that has four projects in it, but three is what we need here because the gateway is all built in. Okay, and now our Visual Studio project has been opened, updated, excuse me. And now we're going to execute these store procedures that were just generated. And I'll give you a brief tour of those just to show you. But that's the, you get an insert, update, delete, and fetch all, and find. So that's, uh, and we'll show you more about those as we need them. So now we're all good to go. Now there's one more thing to do before we can use our data tier. We need to put a connection string environment variable in our project. So we're going to do that now using an app that you just got for free. It came with datatier.net. So I'm going to temporarily close datatier.net. This is connection string builder. You might think this is worth leaving a star on or a like on this video just for this program, even if you don't like datatier.net. All right, and then I'm going to type in my database name, which is Idea Bank, Windows Authentication. Leave all this because we're building for .NET 7. Test and copy. So now we have our environment variable. We're going to go to edit the system environment variables. If you're on Windows 10 or 11, it should be something like that. I haven't used 11 yet, but I can get that opinion. Now here's the datatier.net connection. We're going to add another one for idea bank. I used to always use system variables, but I've learned you don't have to have administrative access to use these. So I've switched to these for this type of project. All right, variable name is going to be idea bank connection and I'm going to paste in our connection string and now I'm going to copy idea bank connection to our clip the name to our clipboard with control C because we're going to need that here in just a second so let me hit OK and hit OK and we can close this so now we're going to go to our project. Now you see we have this data folder. We're going to exclude that from the project and I'll show you why. The reason is because it won't build, but what we're going to do is create a new solution folder called data. And now we're going to add in the four projects of your data tier which we will go to, sorry my dog's legs are making weird noises, but he's getting old and I'm sorry. All right, idea bank, data. First one is application logic component. If I had it to do over again, this would be one project and it's on my to-do list. I just haven't been able to get this down to one project yet. So go with it for now. The data access component, or DAC for short. The gateway. And then finally, the object library, which is compared to Entity Framework, would be your entities. And these, I'll show you briefly. For every table, you get one, you get two classes. They use partial classes. The data class gets rewritten every time, so do not put any custom code in the data class, because this will contain one property for every field in your database, plus a couple of others. And then the business class is just a partial class. You can put any custom properties in, or if you have any custom methods with datatier.net is what that's for. But that's all you need to know for now. And if you see any of those little temporary classes, you can delete these. Um, like here you'll see some, um, some of these have temporary. There we go. You can delete this. This is only here so your NuGet package builds. You can leave it though. It doesn't really hurt. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on. Just wanted to show you. Now, the first thing we want to do is add our references. So let's go to Idea Bank, add project reference. And I'm sorry for my dog snoring, but I can't do anything about it. And add a reference to everything except for the DAC, because the client app is going to be talking to the gateway, and we need this for our connection. And I'll show you why right now. 
Okay, so we've got our three references, and just to show you, everything builds after all we've done so far. It's always a good sign to test that out. Okay, so we're 15 minutes in. We have a data tier, and we have a connection. We just don't have an app yet. So we're going to build our app. Let's go to the connection folder. There's a connection class. Open up the private variables and constants, and you see where it says change to your system environment variable name. I'm going to paste in the name of the system environment variable that was on my clipboard from a couple of minutes ago. All right, so still with me now. Everything is set up for our project. We're ready to go. So the first thing we need to do is add a couple of NuGet packages, or at least one. So I'm going to do an update because the templates are a little bit behind. Okay, and now this is a, just a warning. I, I thought I needed this when I first created these templates, but I don't. Okay, so that was not nothing major. You can ignore that warning if you want or get rid of it like I did. All right, so now we're going to go in the browse section, type in data juggler dot win dot controls and that will give us and this only needs to go in the idea bank wind forms desktop project don't know why that warning is there because I've gotten rid of it but we'll build again make sure okay warning is gone so now let's go build out our form as fast as I can this is where I messed up on my last project and it's on my list to build a UI builder I just haven't finished I'm going to rename this to main form just because I don't like form one as a name. All right, and now there's one optional component if you want to use it in this video. It's called Regionizer, and I will put the link in the video description. It's a Visual Studio extension or package for Visual Studio 2022, so you're going to be using Regionizer 2022. There's also a version for older versions, but this is the one we're using. And so we're going to open up our code. And you can see this is kind of, this is all it really does, uh, Regionizer has a bunch of stuff, but one of the things it does, it'll format the document. And it kind of forces me to give a, this class as the main form for this app. Okay, so now, and also it's got an auto comment dictionary, and that's another story if you want to learn how to set that up. But it, I hit Control Shift and it types certain comments based on the code that's above using regular expressions. But that's a whole other story. What we're here for is to, we want to create a list of ideas. So I'm going to create a properties region. So let me type in the word properties and now what we're going to do is say private oh let's add some references sorry got ahead of ourselves. using object library dot business objects using data gateway and using um, application logic component dot connection just so we have that available and finally two others using data juggler dot win dot controls and using uh, do, 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 data juggler dot ultimate helper which is in every one of my NuGet packages it came with came with win, win controls and the uh, project templates for this project Okay, if you're still here, we're 18 minutes in and we're building out our app. So what we need to manage our list of ideas is somewhere to store them in memory. So we'll call this ideas using regionizers. I'm going to select that and say create properties. Then I'm going to click right here and say create has property. So that just saves you from having to type ideas not equal to null or there's some other ways to do it, but that's one way. Okay, so now we have our app ready. Let's go build the UI. So, launching the UI. I do want to do one thing before we do the UI. I'm going to go to the object library and go to the 
business class and we're going to add a two string method uh, to string and we want to return instead of the base dot to string we want to just return the title of this uh, so that way when it appears in our list box that we're going to build in just a minute let me go to regionizer format selection okay so that just gives us uh, here, I'll put okay so now we have our idea class all set up to load a list so that way it won't say uh, like object library dot business objects it'll say the title of our idea in the list box which is what we want so so now it's time to build out the UI we're all ready so this is the fun part okay so now we're 20 minutes in so hopefully we can build the UI pretty quick go to the first thing I want to do is set a few properties I don't like auto scale mode so I'm turning that off I'm also going to go to our idea bank property go to properties go to build and go to nullable and turn that to disable because you'll hear me cussing if it starts giving me warnings about could be null or something like that don't think I like that chicken for me but that's another story all right so we're, we'll build an icon if we have time if we get to the end of the video but for, for now what I want to just call this is idea bank and we want the startup position to be center screen that should be default can't imagine why they think anybody would want that not to be but go Microsoft the price is right change our font size something I can see because I'm blind all right 12 I don't see very well not actually blind thank God I don't play pool for a living anymore that was my younger days being dumb all right so we want now a background image very first thing so you can use any image you want but if you want I'll put the link to this project if you want to just clone it but uh, let me go to graphics C graphics textures and then we've got got an image called black image there we go got these little speckles can't really even see it too much but okay so now what we want to do is um, the only I'm trying to think if there's anything else we need here but that should be good for now alright so we're gonna add a couple of controls so going to our little toolbox first I'm gonna add a label so I'll go to common controls label and I don't like auto size but doesn't really matter that color for this is going to be web transparent for color is going to be lemon chiffon the font is fine um, might make it bold for this and this text this label is just going to be uh, we'll call it list label or something text is this going to be ideas okay I don't really like that uh, auto size but I'll go with it for time sakes all right now we want to put a list box so could use a list view too but we'll go with a list box they're simpler first thing I want to do is make sure it's not sorted okay it's not the only reason why is you might want to kind of look at them at the way in the order you created them all right and these titles aren't going to be books but we want to give you a little bit of room okay the next thing we're going to do is I am going to uh, I'll just set double buffered to true and then there's a property that I am going to copy from one of my other projects just because there's no reason to reinvent the wheel so we'll go with db compare I think it has it 
and this is going to be create params and I'll show you what that does uh, properties. okay what this this is uh, it just reduces flickering if there's ever any the screen won't update until it, this doesn't matter for this but like for, for graphics programs or for things that are kind of intensive it's a uh, it's better to reduce flickering but it's always nice to have all right so just leaving just wanted to get that done out of the way and now what we want to do is add yeah you might have a lot of ideas I don't know how many you want to show okay and now that's probably plenty let's go to our toolbox and get a button comes with data juggler dot win dot controls now we're going to use a different theme on our button. Dark kind of matches our project a little better. And we're going to call this add button. Change the button text to add. And the button's a little big, but that's fine. We've got a bunch of space here. I'm going to make, with control C, make a couple copies. This is going to be the edit button and the text button text for that is going to be edit. Oops, if I could spell, not e dot. Alright, and then finally the delete button. Alright, so we're going to try to make our three buttons. First I'll center this. And then we'll kind of format horizontal spacing make equal. That's not exactly. I'll kind of move, I'll move it over just a notch. That's probably fine. Yeah, that's close enough for prime time. All right, there's my dog getting up, giving us a good snore. To make sure he's in the video. All right, that's uh, good for now. All right, so now what we want on the right-hand side, we want a little panel that we can display the selected item. So let me, uh, actually I'm gonna do it this way. Format align, hang on. Lefts, and then we gotta scoot this over. That's probably, yeah, we'll go back. Ah, not that. Unselect that. That's close enough for prime time. Okay, so now we've got our list box. We'll name this ideas list box. All right, love the snores going on. He doesn't see the on-air light, but he's sleeping, so he's getting old. It's okay. All right, so what we want now is a control to put in the title and the description for the current dream that's selected or when you're entering it so we're going to go to the toolbox again this is called a label text box control all right and we'll give this a little more space here get this out of our way for now i love working on a time clock it always makes you feel like if I was on a plane and we had 20 minutes to solve the landing gear software, I probably wouldn't make it. All right, so label's gonna be a title. The name is title control. The label text is title. Okay, and that's fine. And then next, we're gonna use one more of these. But this one, we're going to make the name of this description. Oh, I, did. I got one thing we got to do first, though. Hang on. Let me get this little panel. It's called a panel extender. And I use this for, it also reduces, it has double buffering allowed, and the regular panel doesn't. So if I go to double buffering, I mean, uh, doc, where is it? Right. 
Okay, and we'll copy these to our clipboard. Cut. Paste this in and go to back color. All right, so now we can paste in our controls, kind of position them. That should be good. About there. All right, we can make these. Uh, make do, this is uh, the label text of this is description. Okay, so that's fine. Looks a little better. And this one's going to be multi-line. So we're going to change it to true. And that allows you to do this. And then we need two more buttons for a save and a cancel. In case you change your mind and you don't want to edit. Okay. This is going to be the save button. I started to like get this UI all built so I could just show you datatier.net because nobody watches 30 minutes of my video but if you want to watch how to build it that's why I'm building this if it helps one person that's at least what I tell myself alright so button text is going to be save and delete it's going to be that's going to be cancel okay so now what we want to do is by default this is going to be called the uh, details panel and it's going to be hidden by default unless we have a selected idea which let's create that property now so I'm going to go to regionizer, create property, and also create a has property. So anytime in your app. Now, this is some Visual Studio formatting sabotagery going on. So I'm going to just leave it. They like to move everything back. So I'm just uh, leaving it. I don't know why they started doing that, but we'll go with it for now. All right. So we've got our property in place for the selected idea. So now what we're going to do is wire up our events and for that we need an events region so all right so going to our add button hit f4 click now that puts the button way down here we don't want that so I'm going to use regionizer format selection and that puts the event button here. I'll leave it where it's at until Visual Studio moves it back a tab to the left for some unknown reason. All right, so we're ready to add. So we're going to just say selected idea equals new idea. And we're going to call a method called UI enable. My caps lock was on that I'm going to write and you're going to be like we well, don't have a button called UI enable. I'm hit control shift and the auto comment is and now I'm going to copy that to my clipboard I'm going to change this to event and then go to method and that just changed to that to void and now I've got a method. The methods region does not exist so we're going to create a methods region alright I'm a regionaholic Hi Corby, except I don't go to meetings. All right, so now try this one more time, add method. Okay, we've got a method called UI enable. What we're going to do is say, details panel dot visible equals has selected idea. Okay, and we'll just put a show the details panel if there is a selected idea. All right, so now we're all good there. Now, what we need to have happen is when the app starts up, the app needs to load a list of ideas. I realize we don't have any ideas yet, but we're going to go ahead and do that because I can show you how to use uh, datatier.net 
to load your list of ideas even though we don't have one yet so we're gonna do the cart before the horse or the chicken before the egg alright so what we want I'm just gonna create a property for the gateway create properties and I'm gonna say create has property alright so now we're all good here I don't know what just happened there okay try to get rid of my region all right so now we can just minimize all that we have our gateway instance Jesus Christ I, I don't know why Visual Studio just cannot do regions anymore that's another story this worked in 2001 to 2013 uh, and everything changed in 2015 and I don't adapt well eight tracks are still the greatest uh, sound system ever that's how fast I adapt alright so moving on what we want to do now is when the app starts we want to create our gateway so we're gonna say init and I'm gonna hit control shift and it's gonna type in that comment through the magic of regionizer and I'm gonna type in this method and you're gonna see a matching comment because I do this a lot uh, all right so now in the init method what we want to happen is gateway equals new gateway connection dot name and that will load the system environment variable there and I hit control shift to load that auto comment all right so now we will have a gateway available to us in our entire project so what we want to do also in the init method is we want to load our list of ideas so ideas equals uh, gateway dot load ideas pretty tough right all right hitting uh, just put a load the list of ideas from SQL okay so that's pretty easy if you've never used uh, datatier.net. I, I think it, to me it's easier to set up a project than Entity Framework, but I could be biased because I wrote it, I'm sure. But all right, so moving on. What we want to do now is display our list of ideas. So that's a pretty easy method to write. So I'm going to just display the list of ideas. Come over here add method and you'll notice the methods are in alphabetical order which only matters to me but I still like it and on big projects it makes it easier to find your code yes it's all up here but anyway if you don't like regions you know um, sorry alright so next what we're gonna do is we have 23 minutes so we're gonna say ideas list box dot items dot clear I don't have a comment for that. Clear the list. And now what we want to say if list helper dot has one or more items, ideas. Ah. Typing in an auto comment for that. And we'll say for each idea and ideas. And type hitting control shift and it types in that comment and we can say ideas list box dot items dot add idea okay and I'm gonna add one more optional parameter to this method it's gonna be int selected idea ID equals zero so you don't have to have it but this way we can say uh, we're gonna keep track of the index so we'll put a little local this way if we add a new item we can select the new item is why I'm doing this alright so index we want to say we want a temp index variable also All right, temp index equals 
control shift typeset comment and here we can say if selected ID is greater than zero and idea dot ID equals selected idea ID uh, temp index, I mean index equals temp index. I could spell. Okay, now at the end of our loop, if selected, actually, if temp index is greater than or equal to zero, probably could do this without the if even, but. Uh, we can just say ideas list box dot selected index equals index. Okay, and that was the reason I made sure it wasn't sorted. Otherwise, our list would have to be sorted too. All right, if set. All right, so here we're now not if temp index. I meant if selected idea ID is set. All right, so now we can display our list, but you can't display a list until you save one. So we first want to go back though, and I want to do an event, and the event is going to be selected index changed. Just happened to be selected there. Format selection, and I will uh, go back one because that's the way Visual Studio wants it lately. All right, if ideas list box dot has or dot selected item not equal to null, and then we're going to say if ideas list box dot selected items dot is idea. Selected idea equals ideas list box. But selected item as idea. All right, set the selected idea. And now, new method display selected idea. All right. And we need to call UI enable. So we've got to write a method. And we're almost to the adding, so we might still make this. Don't give up on it yet. The plane hasn't has to ditch yet. If they hand you a parachute, then you know you're in trouble. Alright, display to select that idea. Alright. I'll move it back one just to be like the in crowd. If uh, has selected idea. Okay. Hitting control shift there, type that comment. And now I'm going to put locals. I need some variables. So we're going to put, I just realized one thing I didn't add to our database and you're going to see me update a field, which you needed to learn this anyway, if you're still here. So, Okay, our timer just died again. That's the second time this thing has happened, so I need to look at my timer. But we'll keep going. We got 20 minutes left, I think, was about where we were at, so just pretend. All right, sorry about that. I don't know why my timer's messing up, but we're going to add a new field to our database because one of the things I wanted to keep track of was the month. And there's ways through SQL. Let me refresh here. There's ways through SQL to... Uh, get the month, you know, there's a month function, but it's easier just to have a field. So we're going to say update idea, add month, int, null. Month, I got to do it like this, because month is a, uh, a method I was just talking about. Oh, update idea. Uh, alter table, sorry. Sorry. A little late in the evening on me on my Saturday night. Okay, so now we have a new field called month. 
in our uh, database. So this is how you open datatier.net. I'll click on open project, double click, build all, execute our store procedure, and now we have fixed our new field, so that wasn't too difficult. I don't think, just to show you, if we go to manage data, you will now see a new field here, month. No hocus pocus going on, or tomfoolery is the word I like to use. All right, so datatier.net is pretty simple for that. All right, so now what we're going to do is finish out our ad, and I think we got about 18 minutes, maybe less, to be. All right, I'm going to close all our 100 images I had open earlier. So what we want next is uh, we want to have a field for our month. So I'm going to give us a little bit more space. Copy this. I could use a combo box and doing a num, but I'll just use an int to be quick here. This is, that's still too big. That's what she said. All right, so now we've got, uh, where's our name? Month control. All right, and we're gonna change the label text to month. All right, so now when we display, we need a, uh, we'll make this make equal. Okay, just to make that a little better. All right, so now we're going to finish our little method we were writing. So we want string title, string description, and int month equals zero. For now as we don't know it and now we're gonna set our values so uh, title equals selected idea dot title description equals selected idea dot description and month equals selected idea dot month not rocket science here all right set the properties and now we're going to go to uh, uh, display display the values so now we can just safely say uh, title control dot text equals title description control dot text equals description and month control dot text equals month dot to string because it doesn't like that. Okay, so that's our display to sec that I display selected idea method. All right, so now we can go back to our add event new idea. What we want to do is call you enable first, and then we can say title control dot set focus to the text box. So start in the title field. All right. And then we're going to do our save method. So let's do that save event. So let's do that. And we also really need to have edit mode, but we'll do that here in a second. Let's do our, let me show you how you add a record with datatier.net. If you're still here, you deserve to see that at least. Okay, so click, and this is gonna be our save button. Regionizer format selection, get a sip of beer time. All right, control shift to go back a tab. Control tab, I mean. I don't know what just happened there. Shift tab. Sorry, too many uh, controls in my muscle memory. All right, what we want to do if has selected idea, we're going to write uh, capture control values. 
capture the values entered. And we're not going to do a lot of validation. We're just going to assume it's used by somebody smart. All right, so we've got our method. And once again, we're going to just say if has selected idea. And I realize we just did it before we called it, but you never know if somebody stupid will use this later, like me. All right, so what we want to do now is say selected idea dot title equals um, um, title control dot text. Sorry, my brain's getting tired. Selected idea dot description equals description control dot text. Selected idea should have used a shorter variable name here selected idea dot month equals month control dot int value and that's a safe way to get the uh, int value if they type in something stupid it'll be zero all right capture the values okay so that's all done all right so now we're ready to actually perform our save oops trying just to get over here and I hit control shift to type that comment and now we're gonna say um, we have a gateway but just to make sure in case it somehow left us and now we're just gonna say uh, gateway well we'll actually say bull saved equals gateway dot save idea ref and we're going to use the lowercase selected idea because you can't pass in a property with a getter and setter. And we'll just put a uh, perform the save. So that's pretty simple too, right? Wouldn't you agree? Just saving idea. I realize, uh, and that calls the uh, idea. That's going to either, if it's a new record, it's going to insert it. Or if it's an existing record, it's going to perform an update is why I call save. You can, you can call save or insert insert or update directly if you like all right but what we want to do now if saved control shift comment we're gonna say display ideas and we're gonna say selected idea dot ID and that if all goes correctly should uh, select the select the uh, new record all right, so well, actually that's select, not new, select the, uh, s s select in the list box, the selected item, just because we're reloading the list. All right, so just to uh, make sure all this works, let's add, a, add an idea. All right, so this app should be simple to use. All right, so click on add. Okay, now we're going to say title, and I'm going to just going to say my great idea. This is a description. This is <laughs> the text of my great idea. There's lots of times if I can't spell a word, we'll just, well, we, we can use a simpler word. All right, this is the text of my great idea. All right, and the month. I don't even need the month displayed here. I'm gonna make that not editable because you don't have to do it. I'm gonna do that with behind the scenes. So let's cancel this because I just read, we don't even have the cancel button working, but we'll come back over here. Let's go back to our capture control values. Go to implementation. All right, so there's two more things we need to do here. Selected idea dot timestamp but I only want to do that if it's a new record if selected idea dot is new dot time equals date time dot now all right set the timestamp we can add another field for last updated we'll go ahead and do that real quick it won't take us just a second so if we go over here alter table idea we're going to just call this add last updated date and that's going to be a date time and a null and because we added a field we've got to rebuild with datatier.net and that's why we're here 
So we'll open our project, build. Okay, and we'll execute our store procedures. Yes to all. Okay, so now we've got our new updated field. So now what we're going to do is finish our displaying, but let me go back because I, I realized we needed that last updated date. So where's our project? So we're going to say um, selected idea dot last updated date equals date time dot now. So those will be the same. And uh, we're going to put the month here. Selected idea dot month equals uh, date time dot now dot month there we go all right so that should give us enough to save our first record so we'll try that uh wish this stuff was lining up better okay so we'll go ahead and run it now now we should be able to save i just wanted to get that so let's go add our I first idea that could be a little closer to that it looks like but we'll fix that later if we have any time all right title is going to be my great idea id details and that's all we got to do i'm going to make that uh ineditable but we'll do that later and save okay it did not work so we're going to go find out why it didn't work all right so let's go to our save button Where's our save event? Alright, let's see where we failed. My great idea, idea details. Okay, it does not save, so we're going to find out why and I'll show you this is the part that I also like better than in any framework if it doesn't work else string exception here if gateway dot has ex uh, okay exception exception equals gateway dot get last exception all right if the exception exists we're going to get the text here uh, equals exception dot to string all right, all right that's enough for now I want to see why this isn't selling. Isn't saving, I meant not sailing. Uh, my great idea, idea details. notes i added a field called notes and you know what i didn't do i made it not nullable so we're going to alter that column alter column we didn't even really need the notes field I'm not even using it so i guess we didn't really need it but we're going to just it can be uh yeah all right as it apparently was set up as not null. So let's try that one more time. Sorry to, was wondering why that, but that's good for you to see how to uh, debug with datatear.net. And this will be just about the end of the video. Title is my great idea. And then this is gonna be idea details, save. Go back again. Oh, I did. Okay. Oh, 
I know what we didn't do. <laughs> we need a method called load. Uh, we need to load. Uh, I haven't written that. Load ideas. And we'll just do it here. Ideas equals gateway dot load ideas. Could do this in a method, but we'll just do it here. All right. So now that will actually work. Ta-da. Okay. But we're going to do one more thing, which we're going to add a field for edit mode before we write the edit mode. And we'll do the delete, and we'll probably be done in about 10 minutes. So I'm sorry I went over again, I'm sure. It's just hard to build the whole UI. That's why I'm going to build a UI builder, because UIs take the longest time. All right. But it's still an entire app in about an hour is not exactly, uh, you know, if a company wants you to do something, it's not exactly. That's one of the bad things. I don't make that much money because I'm too dang fast at solving. I'm going to have to learn to slow down so I can make some money, but I'm too honest. That's why I'm broke. All right, so what we want to do now is add a property called edit mode. Regionizer. Okay, so just pushing that back. All right, what we want to do in our method for UI enable, uh, we're going to say details panel dot enabled equals edit mode equals true. Only allow editing if edit mode and we could make edit mode in a num but we're going to keep this video <coughs> as simple as possible but now when we do the add method add event wherever that is here it is we need to put uh, edit mode equals true we are editing even though it's an add but it's not uh, we don't want read only for that so we're in edit mode and now when we go to save down here at the bottom edit mode equals false no longer editing uh, I think I'm gonna do that only if it's a good save yeah and we might want to leave them in edit mode if something goes wrong and show a message but this is going to be a short video, so we're almost done. So now, all we're going to do is enter edit mode. So for the edit item, so let's go to the edit button. We also want to do an UI enable. Edit button dot enabled equals has selected idea. Delete button. Did I not call that delete button? Delete button is what it needs to be called. Okay. Uh, delete button dot enabled equals has selected ID. Okay. Only enable these if there is a selected item. Okay. All good. So what we want to do now is do the edit button event. Uh, click if I can find it. Format selection. Move it back one to be like everybody else here. All right. So now we're going to put edit mode equals true. I do have an edit mode in num I could have used, but we'll use that another day. All right. Uh, and now we're going to put UI enable and title control dot set focus to text box. Enter the title. All right, so we got that, and now we should be able to uh, 
That is not changing our button though. Let me start. I need to put, let me go to init. That is, we should have that button only be, there we go. There we go. Okay, so now, like right now, you can edit that though. We're not supposed to be in edit mode. So let me find out what's going on. Uh, oh. Equals equals true computers do what you tell it I was making an assignment there apparently love it All right. Try that. now it's disabled until there we go so now I can say edit and I'll put idea details edit it and our month is not displaying correctly so we'll have to figure that part out but Okay, so that part works, our edit works. So now we're gonna do our delete. So let's go do our delete button. And then I will polish off. Why is this our screen like not visible? Let's try that one more time. Delete. Click. Format selection. Move it over to be like everybody else. All right, now here's how easy it is to delete. If has selected idea and has um, gateway, because we can't delete a gateway without, we can just say uh, bool deleted equals gateway dot delete idea. And that's going to be selected idea dot id. Pretty simple. And then you can just say here, if deleted, you can say ideas equals gateway dot load ideas. Reload. We could have wrote a method for load and display is what I usually do. But we'll just call it display ideas. And there's no longer a selected idea reload all right so we are we have our add edit and delete so that's the full crud method um, what I was wanting to do is find out why our month is not displaying so let's go to our display uh, this selected idea selected idea dot month Let's see if it's actually in the database, or let's see. But we'll, I wanna know if that's the issue or if, okay. Okay, so it's zero in the database. So, um, all right, let's go do our capture control values because we'll save this, so let's continue. Let me go to our capture control values because I'm sure that's not where I wanted to be. Sorry, let me stop. We're running right now. But while we're here, I'll go ahead and use Regionizer to format that because that would bother me if I did. And they say don't do this, but I do it anyway because I'm a rebel. Okay, so that's Regionizer's format document. So now what we want to do this is where I wanted to be. Capture control values. All right, here we go. Month control, no, here's, this is the problem. Okay, so it's gonna be, um, let's figure this out, because uh, it is new. I must not have had this code here. This is, I'm gonna delete this one and create another one. So let's delete our idea. Okay, delete. That should, uh, 
we got to delete the selected item. Sorry, my dog is snoring hardcore right now. All right, where is delete? Selected idea equals null. Because if you delete, there's not a selected idea anymore. So now we're going to add a new idea. This is just going to be my great idea again. Idea details. Save. All right, let's go look in the database. So select star from idea. Okay, the month is there. So now, this time, oh, it's there. Month is displayed. Okay, so we are good. We have now, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the video. It probably took me an hour and 10 minutes. So once again, I went over. But that's how simple it is to use datatier.net. If you follow along, you should have been able to create your own project. And now you can create your own datatier.net projects. Let me know what you think. Do you have any questions? Do you have any comments? Uh, would you prefer it be down to one project? You know, I've worked on project with dozens of uh, projects in the solution, so I guess I'm a little more used to a few extra projects don't bother me. But I would like it to be one just for a little bit simpler deployment or maybe two. But okay, well that's my video. Thanks for watching. Uh, maybe you'll I'll put idea I'll put the idea bank code on GitHub if you want to get the source code and look at it and please leave a star on uh, datatier.net because if I can get to 25, I actually show up in the discovery part after many, 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 many years. All right, well, peace out. Happy Saturday night.